For the first 7 minutes and 40 seconds, I am simply taking tracing paper and making a copy of the front and back sloper so that I can manipulate the tracing paper into the pattern. I have taped the tracing paper to the, pa to the table and then taped the sloper on top of the tracing paper so that it doesn't move while I trace the sloper onto the paper. All markings are transferred, and since there are small punch holes on the vertical darts, I can simply mark through the sloper onto the paper through the punch holes. At the tips of darts, I usually circle the tip with a red pencil so that my eye goes to it easily when I need to work with the pattern. Find where the curve will blend nicely from the wider part of this dart 
into the narrower part. Once you determine where on the curve you've started, simply flip it over and use the same exact numbers. That way you get the same curve. Filling in a grain line. The grain line can be anywhere on the body parallel to the center front. I want to start a bust dart from the side seam and close the shoulder dart. So I've come down below the apex line about an inch and a half. I have a feeling that her bust really is a little bit above what I have drawn as the apex line. So I'm going to have faith in my feelings about this. I feel like her bust line needs to be a little bit higher. So imagine a new apex line approximately one inch above this bust line. Now I'm folding the shoulder dart. I'm folding the leg closest to the center front. I'm going to slash on this new side bust dart and then close the shoulder dart. First measure what it is to make sure that my measurement's correct and keep that in mind because the side dart will open to the amount that the shoulder dart is closed. To allow me to make this a flat pattern, I'm cutting up the vertical dart to the apex line of this new dart. Close your shoulder dart and pin it down.
And this one's a little bit tricky. As you see, the tip of this dart goes to the original apex line. So in a moment, I'll show you how to adjust so that this pattern lays completely flat. The top pin I put in the direction so that it will not slide open. Now if you notice at the original apex line there's still a little bit of a form to it and this isn't laying flat quite yet. I'm cutting a new piece of paper because the slash and spread of this pattern piece on top needs to be extended for a facing and shaping of the dart. About six inches in from the paper, I'm going to create a new line. This will be the fold line at the edge of the blouse. And because I'm going to use one half inch buttons, I'm going to create my center front line one half of an inch away from the fold line, giving myself a one half inch extension for one half inch buttons. Because I've created a dart a little above the original apex line, I'm clipping it just to the apex line so I can make it lay flat. This will not be a problem when I draw the dart in from the side seam. The depth of this dart is just about what the depth of the shoulder dart is. I could also have just skipped slashing the long vertical dart, continued by slashing the side dart, folding the shoulder dart, and adding to the side seams if necessary. If you notice, the vertical dart on the left has a little bit of a distance, a spread in it. That will give me a little bit of ease on the side seam. In the middle of that opening, and about half of an inch away from where I think her apex line will be, I have created a dot 
and then with red pencil bring it back to the edge of the paper at the side seam where the dart is. Remember this will all be tested in muslin. I'm noticing what the ease is. It's about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. That should be more than fine. I won't make the dart, the vertical dart, on the left a deeper dart than the one closest to center front. It will be the original size of the sloper, but the excess will give me the ease down the side. Continue to trace the outline of the pattern. I want to true the side bust dart, so I'm creasing along the top line. Keep in mind, I normally crease the bottom and pull it up to the top line. In this particular instance, it will work pretty much either way, which you'll see when I sew the muslin together. But normally, you see how this one is pressed up? Normally I would press it the other direction away from the armhole where this one's pressed more towards the armhole. And in folding and truing the dart, you see there's a discrepancy at the top underarm area. So I need to put those two together. I'm going to extend the underarm to meet. That gives me a little bit more room under the arm. And while the dart is folded, I might as well cut it with the seam allowance. I allowed three quarters of an inch in this particular case. And just cut through it. That will give you the shape you need. What I did was I took a straight pen and poked a little hole straight through the upper paper to find a, the top of the dart on the underneath piece of paper. One of the wonderful things about using tracing paper is that being able to see through it, I can draw on either side and make it um, visible through both layers. The only time I don't do this is if the pencil markings might transfer to the fabric when I cut it. Again, if you notice, I'm starting on this particular curve with nine at the waist and flipping it over using nine at the waist on all four of the waist points.
one half inch extension. It's good to have a real clean line. So after I trace something, I go over it with the tools necessary, a ruler or a curve to fill in all the dots to make a clean, smooth line. I'm going to fold on that outer extension line. First extending the bust and waist lines. and the hip line. I have folded very carefully down the extension line and I'm pinning it to secure it while I continue to work with the pattern. Pa paper can shift easily when you're working with it and cutting it and tracing. So I'm filling in the neckline on the back side. A right angle from the extension to about half of an inch or so past center front. Now I put a little dot or a little cross mark in the neckline because I am going to have the collar end there. I don't want the collar to come all the way to center front. While my pattern paper is folded, I can add the seam allowance. I'm adding three quarters at the shoulder, one half of an inch around the armhole, three quarters of an inch down the side seam. Curving from the lower part of the hip to the waist, flipping the curve over to create a curve going the opposite direction at the waist, and using the straight ruler for the straight lines.
filling in the seam allowance for the neckline. Necklines, cuffs, and collars I usually patterned with a quarter inch seam allowance so it's not necessary to trim the fabric when sewing. These are things that don't usually get changed even if a person's weight changes. Cut the two layers together around the neckline and across the shoulder. I want to create a full back piece for my finished pattern. So I've taken double the width of the sloper. In the tracing paper and fold it in half. There's very little to be changed for the back in patterning for this blouse. That's why I'm just tracing it as it is. I won't be doing a lot of cutting and slashing.
I've noticed that on the hip area, there's probably not quite enough paper to create the seam allowance, so I may have to add a piece of paper. I added the same amount of shoulder seam allowance as the front three quarters, and normally I would fold that little dart to true it, but I just gave myself a little point above the seam allowance. These darts I've done so many times, I'm pretty sure of the shape of it. Now there's enough paper to add the seam allowance. By taking the front pattern and matching the waistlines and the seam lines down the side, I can trace the outer edge of the seam allowances so that I have the exact same lengths and shapes. The waist and hip lines are pinned down on top of each other. So by cutting the two layers together, actually three layers, I have the exact same shape. Filling in my one half inch seam allowance for the armhole. Filling in the seam allowance around the neck. Securing the two layers of paper together so that it can be cut without shifting, so that both sides will be the same. Transferring all markings from one side to the other.
filling in the notches. Take your straight ruler, follow the line of the leg of the dart, in this case the side seam, and put a little one quarter inch mark for your notch. across the upper shoulder notch at the neckline. And if you notice, the notches go in the direction that the seam will be sewn. A notch at the hip line. I'm not really sure yet how deep I want the facing of this front to be, so I'm going to leave the entire six inches. That will cover the first dart, the first vertical dart, and if this is worn as a jacket, it will be a lovely way to wear the jacket because when it's open, you'll see the beautiful facing instead of the seam lines. I'm comparing my side seams by pinning the side dart shut, marking the hip notch together, and comparing the hem lines. One hem line's a little bit shorter than the other, so I need to take that off. And if you notice, the front of the blouse drops down a little bit. We're going to cut this straight for now. So right now the facing is six inches deep. That's really deep. So I'm going to cut a little bit of the facing away. It will come still to the first dart, but not be quite as wide. I do want it to go up into the shoulder. So not taking anything off of the shoulder, I blend it in to the new line that will be cut away. This will come up when it's when the blouse is finished, the facing will come right to the first vertical dart. But still it's about four inches wide, so it will certainly be wide enough that when the blouse is open, it will cover the insides. So we really have two center front lines, one 
on the left side of the fold line, one on the right, because when the facing is folded under, there are two layers. Writing fold line on that line really helps. So my final decision is to have a two inch hem below the hem line, I mean, sorry, the hip line. So I've simply cut two inches off or, or allowed a two inch hem below the hip line. creating the same line on the back piece. Two inches is a real nice hem for any garment. It gives it a little bit of weight. This is not a shirt tail hem that curves up on the sides. It may be worn as a jacket as well as a blouse. So I want a nice deep hem. I like to circle the tips of the darts because that way my eye goes to that area when I need it without having to search. I'm writing my model's name and what the pattern is. This is blouse back cut one. It will be cut one of fabric where the front is cut two of fabric. Creating the center back notch at the neck and my grain line down center back. CB for center back. I'm filling in the seam allowances. filling in what the amount of the seam allowances are. I like a lot of information on my patterns. That way there's never any question. I did never have to take the time to go back and search, look, measure. It's all there in front of me. Now I have the body front and back. I'm going to measure the armholes excluding seam allowance. Start with the zero and measure carefully around the actual seam with the measuring tape standing on its side, the numbers touching the paper. Write the amount next to the armhole. This will be used when I go to draft the sleeves. You'll do the same for the back. <laughs> 